Okay, welcome back to part two of our nuclear chemistry discussion. Uh, we just wrapped up talking about the comparative sizes of alpha to beta and gamma particles. Alpha are the largest, and then beta and then gamma, of course, are the smallest. We talked about their penetrating abilities and how that really depended upon the size of the particle. Alpha can penetrate the worst, and beta, or excuse me, gamma can penetrate the best. Uh, but it's the least damaging because the particles are the smallest. And if alpha particle can gain access to soft tissue, then that would be the most damaging because of its, its massiveness. Well, today we're going to talk about where those particles come from and essentially what happens when an atom is radioactive and has a nucleus that's unstable. If you can imagine trying to pack a bunch of protons uh, really, really close to each other in a nucleus of an atom, those positively charged particles want to break apart and uh, repel each other. Now, there are neutrons in the nucleus as well, but they're neutrally charged. They're not going to help much as far as, you know, binding those protons together. So there's some type of force in the nucleus that holds those positively charged particles really, really, really close together. Um, Einstein called it the strong force. Well, as those atoms get bigger and bigger, and as the proton to neutron ratio changes, uh, they can become unstable. And some of the atoms become so unstable, they start ejecting protons or neutrons or other particles in an attempt to stabilize themselves. So the first type of particle we're going to talk about is an alpha particle. Now, an alpha particle simply is an ordinary helium nucleus, and it's released from an unstable nucleus of a radioactive atom. Now, the original nucleus will lose two protons and two neutrons, which, of course, is the same as the mass of a helium atom. Two protons making the atomic number two, plus two neutrons making the mass number of four. So it's identical to the nucleus of a helium atom. Now, I did not say that an alpha particle was completely identical to a helium atom. There's a big difference. That big difference is the velocity at which they're moving. Helium gas might travel at about a thousand miles per hour at room temperature. Alpha particles travel between, oh, a tenth and a twentieth the speed of light. They're being ejected from the nucleus of that atom at a very, very high speed, and as a result, they are much more energetic than a simple helium atom at room temperature. Also, they don't have any electrons, so they carry a positive charge. Now think back uh, to our last video. Weren't the alpha particles attracted towards the negative pole of the magnet? Remember, that's because they have two protons, two neutrons, and no electrons, so they carry a positive charge. Now, plutonium-239 is an example of an atom that will eject um, an alpha particle. Um, in an attempt to stabilize itself, this nucleus will eject two protons and two neutrons. Now, of course, that's going to change the makeup of the nucleus. Instead of having 94 protons like plutonium did, it will now only have 92 protons. And the element with the atomic number 92 is uranium. So we have actually transmutated an atom of plutonium into an atom of uranium, which is not an ordinary chemical reaction. These are nuclear processes. And in that process, we can actually change the makeup of the nucleus. Now, we also lose two neutrons. So if you lose two neutrons and two protons, the mass will go down by four. So we start with a mass of 239, and we end up with a mass of 235. So we start with an, an atom of plutonium with a mass of 239. We end up with an atom of uranium with a mass of 235 plus an alpha particle. Well, let's try another example. Why don't you take just a second and try determining what the product of an alpha emission from an americium-241 atom would be. Try to figure out what the product nucleus would be. Take just a second to think about that, and then I'm going to do it for you, and we'll see how you did. Okay? All right, you're back. The element symbol for americium is AM, its mass is 241. Now, the atomic number of americium, we're going to have to look up. And so, americium has an atomic number of 95. 95. So, there's 95 protons. Now, 
it emits an alpha particle. So it's going to lose two protons and two neutrons, so a mass of four, and we will symbolize that with the element symbol for helium. By the way, sometimes that is symbolized with four over two and the Greek letter alpha. Either way is fine with me. What's the other product nucleus? Well, let's see. We started with 95 protons. Two of them were ejected, so we're down to 93. The mass started out to be 241. We lost two protons and two neutrons, so a mass of four. So now we drop to an atomic mass of 237. What element has the atomic number 93? Well, if we look on our periodic table, we can find atomic number 93, and that is Neptunium, NP. Okay, so americium will transmutate by giving off an alpha particle into Neptunium-237. Now you can see why these particles are so large and why their penetrating ability is so poor, because they have a mass of four. They're much, much larger and then what we end up with um, when beta and gamma emission occurs. In fact, let's talk about beta next. Next up is beta emission. And in this case, an electron is given off by an unstable nucleus. Now that sounds a little bit unusual. An electron is given off by an unstable nucleus? How can that happen? Well, the nucleus actually gains a proton and loses a neutron. Now think about what happens when that occurs. Protons have a positive charge. That proton essentially turns into a neutron, a neutrally charged particle. So in the process, sorry, I said that backwards. <laughs> um, a neutron turns into a proton. So in the process, that neutron loses a, a, a negative charge and becomes a proton. Let me clear that up a little bit. I just confused you just a bit. Let's take carbon-14, for example. Carbon-14 has six protons, and it has eight neutrons. That's where the mass of 14 comes from. If it ejects a beta particle, that means that one of the neutrons in here has transmutated or turned into a proton. So the atomic number goes up by one. We've gained a proton. Well, how do we gain a proton from a neutron? Well, that neutron needs to lose a negative charge. A neutron is neutral. If it kicks out a negative charge, it now becomes positive. So that's how a neutron turns into, we'll say, a proton. So the atomic number goes up by one, so now we have seven protons. And we only have seven neutrons now, because remember, one of them turned into a proton. So the mass is still 14. The mass number remains unchanged, but the atomic number goes up by one during beta emission. Let's do another example. Let's take rubidium-87. Turns out that rubidium, Rb, atomic number 87, is radioactive. It emits a beta particle. So we're going to symbolize that with 0 over negative 1 and a small letter e, symbolizing that a neutron is ejecting an electron and creating a positively charged particle. Now let's look up the atomic number for rubidium quickly. And it has an atomic number of 37. 37. Now if a neutron turns into a proton, we are going to end up with a particle with 38 protons. Now the element with the atomic number 38 is strontium. SR. So we transmutated rubidium into strontium. Notice the mass number stays the same. We still have the same number of protons plus neutrons, simply a neutron turned into a proton. So the total number stays the same. An easy way to check your work is just make sure the bottom numbers on each side of your nuclear equation balance. So does 37 on the left side equal negative 1 plus a 38. Hmm, it does. Does 87 for a mass number on the left side equal 0 plus 87 on the right? And obviously it does. Now you'll have some of these to do on your homework tonight. Okay, let's quickly talk about gamma radiation. Gamma radiation um, is high energy electromagnetic radiation. 
that electromagnetic radiation is given off in the form of photons, which, according to physicists, are massless. As a result, the mass and the atomic number of the nucleus remain unchanged. So oftentimes it's symbolized as zero over zero with a gamma symbol. Zero meaning uh, the atomic number remains unchanged, and zero up top meaning the mass number just changed, uh, remains unchanged. So it's just high frequency, high energy, electromagnetic radiation. That is essentially massless. That's why its penetrating ability is so high. It's the tiniest of all the particles. Normally, we omit this in writing the nuclear equation. However, once in a while, you will see that symbolism. Okay, once in a while, you'll run into positron emission. And in positron emission, uh, it's identical to an electron, except you're kicking off a positive charge instead of a negative charge. So the original nucleus will lose a proton and it will gain a neutron. So it's sort of like beta emission. It's the opposite, though. You see, instead of a neutron turning into a proton, we now have a proton turning into a neutron. So we need to kick out a positively charged particle. So again, it's moving at a very high rate of speed, so it carries quite a bit of energy with it. So if we have carbon-11, it has six protons and five neutrons, uh, that's where the 11 comes from. Remember, the mass number is protons plus neutrons. If six of them are protons, the other five must be neutrons. And a proton turns into a neutron. So the atomic number is going to go down by one because it's turned into a neutron. The mass number stays the same. The atomic number goes down by one. So we transmutate carbon-11 into boron-11. Well, let's practice with the positron emission of potassium-40. So we have potassium with a mass number of 40, and the atomic number of potassium is 19. And we're going to kick out a positron, 0 over positive 1e. And what do we end up with? Well, let's see. We have a proton that turns into a neutron. So the proton is going to go down to 18. The mass number will stay the same. The atomic number 18 is the element argon. So we transmutate a potassium atom into an argon atom. Once again, let's check the math. 19 for the atomic number on the left. 1 and 18 equal 19 on the right. 40 for a mass number on the left. 0 plus 40 is a mass number on the right. So. There's positron emission. It's unusual. We don't see that very often. We normally will see alpha, and we will see beta, and we will talk about gamma emission. Every once in a while, positron emission comes up. Um, why don't you read through electron K capture on your own? It talks about it in your textbook. Uh, we won't do an example for right now, just in the interest of time. When we come back, we're going to talk about radioactive dating and the concept of half-life. Alrighty, thanks.